a Skype if you would like to go ahead and add Rundown Rants on Skype and give us a call during the matches. Leave a voicemail for us with your thoughts on those matches. Absolutely. Please give us a call. Let us know what you think, what's going on. But right now, we're just waiting for Clash Legal to load into this game. And we're about to get started. We're going to see some Protoss versus Zerg action here on MLG Shakira's Plateau. And, uh, I mean, let's talk a little bit about this map. I mean, I would say that this is kind of a free Forge Fast Expand for Protoss. I mean, this is pretty much what mm -hmm. we see across the board out yep. of Protoss players. So I'm just going to throw the prediction out here that Clash Legal probably going to be able to take this game. He's going to get that free expansion up. And, uh, I mean, Blink plus OBS play, you can blink into the main with Stalkers. It's super, super hard to hold for the Zerg player. And the third is actually just kind of isolated. So we'll have to see if, uh, you know, Complexity's Ghost War can, can handle the heat. But we're into this game. We're going to do some player introductions here, Rance. In the purple, spawning at the 2 o'clock position, we've got Clash Legal. Of course, and we're going. To, should we go for the full-on Street Fighter voice? I think we. I think. Uh, do you want to do, you wanna do uh, it? Okay, I'll try. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, is that is that my cue? And in the red, from Team Complexity, we have Gausa. There you go. Yeah, yeah, we're we're getting there, man. Did that work? Yeah, I think okay. I think it worked. So uh, a little bit of a GSL impression there. Let's also do the GSL camera zooms. There you go. We have, uh, of course, Complexity's Gosur as the Red Zerg. Uh, we see the pylon going down at the low ground already, so definitely that FFE coming up. You're going to be able to wall off with the forge, with some gateways, cybernetics core, and then put some cannons behind. And, uh, I mean, usually what you see out of a Zerg player, when they see something like that, is they will just go for a big roach all in. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, fortunately, with the ramp like this, it's very easy to hold that with just two or three cannons. Mm -hmm. There's not a big wide open natural. You can't put on pressure from a lot of angles. So, uh, we'll have to see what, you know... What Ghostwar decides to go with, looks like he's up to 14 supplies so far, hasn't thrown down a gas. So I would expect probably a 14 pool, and then a 15 or a 16 hatch after that. Looks like he could be doing it the other way, though. I nope, mean, the, the hatch, hatch hey, first is that? just so, so risky. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do see the pool going down for him. And, uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to see the forge on 14. Going up to 15 supply immediately. That nexus will probably go down on 15 supply. Um, you know, with the pool coming down like this... The timings work out that you really actually don't need to get the cannon first. You can just go for the Nexus. Mm -hmm. You'll be absolutely fine. I'm sure both these players know that. This probe continuing to, you know, steal some minerals from his opponent's base. That's actually five minerals that Ghost will never get back. It's going to make a difference in the game. Probably. Yeah. Oh, always does. Pylon block going down at the natural. He's not going to be able to get that down, but the pool about to finish up. And, of course, the pro Oh, a cannon going down. Damn. A couple cannons going down. So... He probably needs to pull some drones here. Yes, he is pulling drones. So the proper response, that's a lot of drones coming out. I don't know if you need to pull that many. It takes four drones to kill a building cannon. But he's going to make sure that this doesn't get up for sure. And uh, Ling's on the way. <laughs> Abandoning this cannon. What's wow. going on there? Let's I don't know. All the, the Ling's, okay. Ling's showing up. They're going to be able to finish that off. Cancel on the cannon. That is the wise choice out of uh, Clash Legal, of course. You know, he didn't actually. <laughs> oh, and I love this. This is this is one of those things that is just. Uh, I do this in my matches versus Protoss. That's fantastic. I throw down the hatch, and I'm like, hey, you won't let me hatch in, in my base? I'm going to hatch in your base. Is he going to Evo that guy? Uh, he might do the Evo trick. The Evo you trick is pretty cool. Up, will it be able to get up? Uh, it doesn't matter. He's still delaying the hatch. Or okay. delaying the Nexus. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, the gateway is just now not even halfway done, so it's not like he can text super quickly out of this. And the hatch, of course, going down at this base. The single Zergling keeping watch. Will he do the Evo? No, it looks like not. So, uh, and the cannon canceled there. So both players doing some some cancels. This pro or drone, of course, still alive. He's going to be able to do a little bit of scouting after that. Pretty good Zergling spread, keeping himself map aware. Um, and the gateway finishing up. Do we see gas yet? Yes, the first gas finishing up. So a little bit, a little bit of a later gas if you're going for a really tech-heavy play. Um, so I don't think we're going to see a Stargate follow-up here, but uh, you never know. We might. We might. 
Yeah, I think I agree with you there, Gwen. This looks like a multi-gate uh, a multi-gate start for the Protoss. Absolutely. Uh, you see the Zerg player adding the super-duper quick third into the mix, though, and uh, that's before the uh, natural expansion even completes. Absolutely, before gas as well. So he's gone three hatch before gas. This probe is going to see it all um, before it gets uh, hammered on a little bit by the queen there. Um, using her claws to try and take that out. Probe should be able to escape just fine, though, because queens are actually slower than molasses off creep. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, the probe continuing to stay alive. So uh, Hero Probe here getting all the scouting information that it wants. Sees that natural, sees the queen on the way at the natural. Of course, the hat kind of wiggles. It's like jelly mm. a little bit. Um, Lots of drones coming out of the Zerg base now as the Nexus on the Protoss side about to finish up. Uh, and uh, we just checked in on the third there. It's getting pretty fat, and look at this. This could be scouted here if this Ling doesn't get the kill real quick. Absolutely is going to get the scout off. There's no way he's going to miss that. Oh, you need to be mineral walking there, Pro, and he sees the third go down. He will get picked off at this point, but uh, not before getting that vital information, so he knows a big two-base all-in isn't coming. He knows he can sit back, he can get his tech up. And look at this, poking aggressively out on the map with a Zealot and a Stalker. It's a uh, move I really like, I mean, because really, what does Zerk have on the map? Uh, I mean, taking a look at the units tab, he's got four Lings, and a Zealot and a Stalker beats four Lings. Oh, yeah. And now there's only three, because one just died. Hmm. All right, well, uh, Protoss is going to take control of that north side Zelnaga Tower there, and it uh, looks like he's actually going to check in on the south side one as mm -hmm. well. Uh, I like the Overlord placement in, near the north side and the south side of the uh, Protoss base. And the, the big thing you want to check for here as uh, complexities go to of course, is the gas timing on these natural gas. That can tell you a lot about what your opponent's doing. Of course, right now he's just adding up, and look at this hero drone stayed alive inside the natural and inside the main so long. Gets to see exactly these gateways going down. Says, hey, I see your gateways. I know you're chrono boosting that mm -hmm. plus one attack at the front. Mm -hmm. And your warp gate as well. Uh, and we'll have to see. I mean, the gas now going down there. I wouldn't be surprised to see a like a double robo come down, because this is actually only three gates that he's up to now. And we're at eight minutes in the game. Hmm. So he's definitely banking resources for something, but uh, whether it's going to be double robo, whether it's going to be, you know, uh, you know, Stargate play, we'll have to see. And we're not going to find this out until the scouts are all removed from the Protoss base here, and it looks Actually, like we have the Dark have Shrine going down. Ooh. So uh, kind of a kind of a cool twist, and I'm sorry, now, I was that this scouted? Game. I believe it was. He got the. Uh, yeah. Let's let's take a look and see if that was scouted. Uh -huh. Yes, he does know the Dark Shrine is down. So of course, this is still. You know, a good move. And I, I, I like don't... this too. I'm, I'm a fan of the Zealot, the Zealot Archon. Like yeah, well, this, the, the Zealot Archon is, is super strong, but the other thing you have to realize about a move out like this is that um, until Zerg gets per, uh, detection, which Lair's just halfway done, mm -hmm. he can't put any pressure on. And he doesn't have any Evos down. Or he's got one about to finish up. Well, so I mean, the, the, if he's gonna you know, the, the Evos and getting those up, because the Dark Trine isn't going isn't gonna to finish in time for DTs to really get in and do any damage with the Scout. He's going to be able to defend against it, but the big thing here is that Protoss can now use this map control with the DTs to just expand. Mm -hmm. And then three base Protoss is, is kind of a scary thing to deal with. You don't want to deal with that as a Zerg player. So um, he's buying himself time with this more than anything else, even with it being scouted. And he's getting blinked at the same time so um, you know he shows the shows the DTs you know uh, that's gonna force the Zerg to be on the back foot build some uh, spore crawlers at the same time he's building the proxy panel up here wants to deny this third with some warp gate aggression uh, I don't know if this is the best move Bill although he does have a lot aggressive. of zealots warp in here the zealots are gonna go down faster those rings of rope just uh, you can see him going down I, I like what you said there Glenn it doesn't look like this is gonna be quiet enough Nice micro, though, uh, pulling back. Yeah, those some great stalkers. blink micro with those stalkers. Mm -hmm. So he's actually going to push this back, blinking forward, picking off some more. And these pylons are up. Actually, a photon cannon defending that pylon. So I really like that choice. I think that we see that underused a lot by uh, Protoss players. And two DTs morphing in. We'll be able to be detected, though. There is, overseas there. There is, uh, there is no spore here, but those DTs, they're just headed off there. And, and this is one of those decisions where you're making Zerg split up their army. He targets down the Overseer. A great move. Yeah. Getting surrounded, though, by some Lings. Don't want to lose those stalkers but well, this will get cleaned up super fast that's a lot of road this one but where did those dts go where did those dts go are they in the main no i don't see them in the main they must have gotten picked off by that force 
And this uh, pylon is going to go down. The Stalker's able to blink away and run. There's another proxy pylon there that uh, I'm sure will go down next. Uh, that was um, kind of expensive there, Gwen. And, and really, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with the supply count right now. Uh, oh, I mean, absolutely. It's a, it's a huge differential. Um, Ghost Warrior handled that pretty well. I don't feel like, uh, you know, he really used those DTs the way that I, I think he should have. I think he should have taken this third, not gotten aggressive, and just used the DTs to hold back, pin his opponent back while he got that third up and established. But right now, he doesn't really have the units to defend this third base. Nope. And, a, and a big counterattack out of Ghost Warrior. He's got the two... Um, you know, the two overseers here, so he's he's well aware that there could be DTs out on the map defensively and doesn't want to lose to any of that. All right, we see some uh, strengthening of the third base down there for the Protoss, uh, but the force is very small. I, I like the amount of bases on the third side right now. Here we go. Roach is going to move in, try to uh, deny this expansion here, but they don't it's stick with great it. force fields wow. go down. Trapping some Roaches, getting those for free. Um, and of course the blink back avoiding taking any actual damage hydralis out on the map uh, I, I really like I understand going hydra when your opponent is on a gateway only composition But um, the hydralis in general is just it's it's an all-in unit You cannot retreat with them and so I'm a little bit scared for ghosts who are going for this But look at the supply difference mm -hmm. like you mentioned rants. It's a double at this point man Absolutely. I mean almost you know closing in on double you know ghosts who are macroing like a beast I still think with the correct upgrades is Protoss, though. A three-base Protoss versus this multi-baser can still hang in there. Oh, absolutely. Here's agree. the problem, though. I don't see any uh, any Forge upgrades happening right now. Is he upgraded at all? He does have the, the plus one attack. Uh, and let's let's take a look. No, he oh, actually yeah, went two. he actually okay. went for the plus two attack off there and uh, getting an immortal and a war prism. So he's uh he said I need to be defensive right now, but uh, oh he does not want to lose this uh oh, he's this immortal. Lose the, loses the Robo, so that's a big hit. And this is just going straight for the natural. No, he gets the block in time, but a huge engagement here. Don't lose this Immortal. Oh, no, it's going to go down to the Roach Fire. Without an Immortal, he's not going to have the damage against the Roach. Roach flanking from the other side. Zerglings as well. Force Field's going down, but it's not going to be enough. This Force is going to tear through this Blink Soccer, if microed correctly. And goes to streaming in with more units. 17 roaches on the Remax. He's blinking his face off, though, Gwen, and he's actually handling, handling it pretty well, and he's keeping the focus off of the Nexus. But the final cannon goes down here, and he starts to run out of units real quick. Looks like he's about to be overrun. Absolutely. Blinking to the high ground. He's going to lose this Nexus. He's going to have to get that up. I think the Ghostwear needs to pull back. Do you see any harassment going on anywhere else in the map while this is happening? No. And legal GG GG. Hmm. So, uh, game one. Sick macro play there. Going on, uh, uh, yeah, convincingly in Ghost Wars' favor. Um, you know, Legal went for that DT. It got scouted, and then he just he didn't do the fast, fast, um, you know, of course, the, the fast third into more of a macro play. Opted mm -hmm. to try and go for a big two-base.